here's the thing. You've been so successful, uh, very successful. Your father was a famous percussionist. Yeah. You've been introduced to people like, you know, the Jackson 5, James Brown, uh, shaking hands with all these people. Being around music like that and wanting to do music, did you ever feel like it was eminent? No, actually, I was running from it. I, didn't, I wasn't, music wasn't like my first choice. Yeah? What about the Fugees? You were an original member of Refugee Camp, no? Yeah. But you didn't really want to take it seriously. But even at that time, I was distracted by a lot of other things. Like what were you distracted by? Other things. Oh, trying to get that guap. You're <laughs> that trying to guap. get that guap. Really? So yeah. when did you decide, okay, I'm going to focus? When I got locked up. That's when I was forced to be focused. Because I know, like, coming out, there wasn't no um, programs, no future, no other avenues to really make it as a convicted felon. You know, there's no jobs available for you. You're really an outcast of society at that point. So I had to figure out something that can keep me, you know, creating the same lifestyle I was used to and still be able to positively make good money. It's interesting you say that because a lot of times, you know, I'm sure everyone has a friend who's been incarcerated or whatnot, and sometimes people do come out with a different outlook, but sometimes oh, yeah. if they can't get a job no, and they're like, I gotta go back. They all come out with a good outlet. Everybody comes out not wanting to go back in. Okay. It just, there's no, there's no way not to go back in. You can't work. I mean, you can't vote. Even if you got money stashed away, you can't create no club or nothing. You can't get a liquor license. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you can, it's nothing you can do. Yeah. So it's like you're forced to find something to do because minimum wage can't pay, you know, your rent and your insurance and your light bill and your and telephone your watches, and your car. And pay. it's like, it's impossible. How are you going to survive? You're going to end up going right back to what got you in the first place just to survive. Well, it's good to see that kind of negativity turn into a, a positive thing. You're also an ambassador for Senegal, which I thought was dope. Yeah, that's, that was a, a big step for me politically. You know, like, it's huge for me right now. What does that entail? Why was that something you actually wanted to do? Well, because sometimes, you know, like, growing up as a regular person, sometimes you watch how uh, politicians maneuver and how they make certain decisions, how they spend certain dollars, and you yeah. wish you could be in there to help it, like, evolve a little bit. Because in certain parts where I was from, like, I left, came to the States 10 years, came back, and nothing changed. Yeah. So I knew they weren't doing nothing with that money. Okay. So with me, it was more so just trying to make sure the kids was good because the kids, at the end of the day, was the future of rebuilding Africa, all in general. Well, it's good that people like you involved in that yeah. cause. As well, before we take off here, we have an audience question from Lindsay over here. All right. What up, Lindsay? Hi, Akon. It's Pat. Um, I was just wondering, with such a successful music career, how do you manage to balance your personal life and your uh, profession? Um, actually, it's easy because it's, still, it's really just one life. It's really no difference. Like... Um, you know, if I get to a point where I miss her or she miss me, I'll fly her out. She just had to ride with me. <laughs> <laughs>